Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. And brought to you by Matson and the Adahi Tanu Program. Cars Plus, reminding you to put your phone down while driving. Distractions won't get you there. Heads up, Guam. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Starting now on primetime, John Boom Metanonia and his brother back in court today. Plus, after one locally acquired case of dengue fever has been confirmed, what steps are being done to ensure the virus doesn't spread? And with a new GovGuam health insurance provider set to take over, many public sector employees aren't too thrilled. Hi, and good evening, everybody. I'm Jason Silas, and these are tonight's top stories. Well, another motion was argued for the recusal of the judge from John Boom Metanonia's case, but this time, it was denied by the court. Adriana Cotero has our top story. The point that the government and the defense agree in this particular case is that uh, a reasonable person, not a reasonable judge, not a reasonable lawyer, a reasonable person would uh, question the judge's impartiality in, rule, in presiding over this case. Uh, when issues are coming before her that involve other matters where she presided. That was the argument both the defense and government presented in district court Monday afternoon for the motion to recuse Judge Ramona Manglonia from John Boom Mantinonia's case. In June, Boom was indicted for obstructing justice by endeavoring to influence a juror in the Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser drug trial and for conspiracy to distribute ICE. Boom, along with his brother William Tapasna Mentononia and former juror Greg Tyginko, were accused of conspiring to influence the jury to vote not guilty in the Raymond and Juanita Martinez drug trial. After two mistrials, the case was moved to California, where the Martinez's eventually entered a guilty plea and sentenced to two years in prison. In court this afternoon, Boom's attorney Jay Ariola motioned for Judge Manglonia's recusal based on a sealed case in the CNMI, which she presided over. Judge Manglonia denied the motion. We need to consider all our options right now. Judge Manglonia said her written decision would be issued shortly, and following the court asked both parties if they were prepared to argue the second motion. The review of order to release. Attorney Ariola asked to wait for the written decision and also stated that more motions would be filed before the October 4th deadline. A return date was set for October 29th. Boom's brother William also appeared in district court today. In Judge Manabusan's courtroom, William appeared for a status hearing with his attorney, William Gavris. Gavris stated that he is still reviewing the discovery and another status hearing was scheduled for September 30th. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. And we've got an update for you now on efforts to ensure the dengue virus does not spread after receiving confirmation of a single local case last week. Over the weekend, spraying at two public schools began today with additional efforts continuing this evening. Julia Santos has our next story. There's only one confirmed case so far, um, and, and all of the efforts are being taken right now to ensure that it doesn't spread further with all of the different stakeholders involved. Those efforts include the fumigation at Ordot Chalampago Elementary and Agata Johnson Middle School, which started on Sunday and continue today, prompting their closure. Additionally, more than 80 homes in a 200-meter radius of the confirmed case of dengue fever will be sprayed with insecticides. Guam Homeland Security Office of Civil Defense spokesperson Jenna Blas. Mayor Angakta Manila Mayor is heavily involved. Um, fortunately, he's able to reach out to those constituents that live within the Manila village and help us get that information out regarding what exactly they'll be doing inside the home, inside and outside their home. Public health, according to Blas, has also been hitting the streets, spreading the word. They have physically gone to these homes so far and given out some um, basic preparedness information about dengue and what exactly um, they can be expecting. Today, as well as into early this evening, part of those efforts will be going to those residents again and actually asking them if they're able to spray insecticides inside and outside their home. This is the first locally confirmed case of dengue in Guam. Public health, Guam EPA and Homeland are all on alert, encouraging to the community to be as well. Residents definitely should be concerned as far as uh, being able to take care of themselves in their homes. So uh, the Department of Public Health has issued a lot of information about ways that you can mitigate, mitigate this spread of mosquitoes. Public health encourages everyone to do their part by taking steps to eliminate standing water, improve drainage, and prevent puddles around your home. If you collected rainwater, you're advised to ensure it's properly covered. Use insect repellent and wear long sleeve shirts and long pants to protect yourself from being bit by mosquitoes. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Julia Santos.
Julius adds that classes are scheduled to resume at Agata and Orda Chalampago on Tuesday. The last confirmed case of locally contracted dengue was 75 years ago. For more on the mosquito-borne virus, check us out on Instagram at KUAM News. In other news tonight, the recent riot over at JFK High School in Upper Tumon prompted the Guam Federation of Teachers Union to meet with the Guam Department of Education superintendent to discuss shortcomings. Adriana rejoins us. She has our next story. We just cut too far. Uh, in 2018, they asked DOE to cut their budget by $12 million and it ended up being uh, $17.5 million. So now we're at the end of that budget cycle and there just isn't enough money. Not enough money from Gov Guam for the Guam Department of Education. And this has resulted in staffing shortages across the board. It appears there are some shortages in uh, uh, positions that have direct student contact in the Department of Education at, at all levels. That includes uh, teaching positions, special education, substitute teaching, uh, even custodial. These shortfalls have led to the Guam Federation of Teachers knocking on GDOE Superintendent John Fernandez's door. This afternoon, GFT Field Representative Robert Koss met with Fernandez to discuss the recent riot at JFK High School and the concern with adult supervision. It's my understanding there actually were uh, uh, some adults in that room. Uh, I understand they were among the first to be attacked and, and did, that's why they did not appear on the video. They were actually on the floor. Koss said inadequate staffing makes it difficult for the department to provide necessary supervision and that jeopardizes the safety of students. The union uh, and the school board have a committee. Uh, we're going to meet, we're going to review the specific staffing at each and every school uh, as it exists today. And uh, we're hoping that with the implementation of the new budget, uh, we'll be able to fill some of these positions. And it looks like money is the problem and the solution. Costs adding that if additional resources are needed, GFT and GDOE can come together and ask the legislature. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. Elsewhere tonight, the open enrollment period for the GovGuam health insurance contract has been extended as new vendor Aetna gets set to take over. But many staffers in the public sector still question the transition, with more than a thousand of them signing an online petition asking to stay with former carrier Calvo's Select Care that served them for more than 18 years. Here's Nestor Lacanto. Aetna International issued a news release Sunday announcing that the enrollment period will be extended from September 23rd to October 12th. The company says it will hold a series of open enrollment sessions with experts available to discuss plan and health benefit options, as well as provide more information about Aetna services. Details on the times and locations will be announced in the coming days. Aetna says employees will retain the basic features under their current program and local network access and on-island support will continue as normal. Aetna says under the new program, members will receive additional support in the form of 24-7 customer service. Access will also continue to St. Luke's Hospital in the Philippines and to over 1 million U.S. mainland providers. But many apparently aren't welcoming the change. Longtime incumbent carrier Calvo Select Care says at the request of GovGom employees, it launched an online petition to repeal Public Law 3483. It also asked the legislature to submit and the governor to sign a new law that would allow employees to make their own choice from among multiple qualified bidders. More than a thousand people have signed the petition and hundreds have submitted comments, most commonly stating that they should have a choice or that they prefer to remain with their current carrier. The current contract expires at the end of the fiscal year on September 30th. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. In weather headlines, a tropical storm is moving well away from Guam and to the north, but you don't want to put your umbrellas away just yet. According to NWS meteorologist Landon Aidlett, his agency is monitoring a convection of showers and thunderstorms that's at the tail end of the formation. However, he says the rain won't be as bad as what we experienced this past weekend, specifically on Sunday morning. Most of the islands received between four and eight inches of rain yesterday. That's 24-hour rainfall. Here at the uh, weather office at the airport, we did get uh, 8.2 inches. That broke a new day fall, daytime record for September 15th. We, of course, were posting on our social media channels this past weekend some telling video capturing flooding experienced in several parts of the island in Tumon, Harmon, the area around Polaris Point, and as far south as Marizzo. And also tonight, Jenna Blas, Public Information Officer for the Guam Homeland Security Agency and the Office of Civil Defense, says that the torrential rain caused severe flooding at several of the island's major thoroughways, many of which I just mentioned. 
As an emergency management agency, HERS is responsible for coordinating efforts relative to the change in the weather. For flooding incidents that were as large as yesterday, uh, we definitely worked with all of our stakeholders, Department of Public Works, even Guam Power Authority and Guam Water Works Authority, all of the utilities, um, and all, all of the major stakeholders um, to see if there was any extra steps that needed to be taken. Um, the governor's office was very proactive working with our office and making sure that we were able to coordinate all of the different efforts behind the scenes. She says her agency is consistently training for these types of emergencies specifically with much of the initiative going on with September, of course, being National Preparedness Month. Well, we are just getting started, my friends, so please stay tuned and keep streaming us because primetime will continue right after these messages. Get up-to-the-minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Matson is in this community. We've been in this community for decades. We're gonna be in this community for decades to come. Things will get busy, things will get quiet, but we're gonna be here. We're your hometown carrier. And that matters to us. Reliability is the core of our business. We take pride in ensuring that we arrive in Guam on time as scheduled. It's our local employees who understand the market, who understand the business, and provide that a hard work for you each and every day. When we hold ourselves to high standards, our customers also hold us to the high standards. We establish good business relationships that turn into friendships. That's why it's so important to be here and be trusted by your customers. We want you to trust Matson like your friend, like your family. Half the day, I'm in the club. Half the day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half the day, I'm in the club. Choose, press, play. Check out the latest flicks at home on Docomo Pacific. View it on demand, powered by TiVo. Here's our top picks for the month. Choose, press, play, and enjoy endless entertainment with View It On Demand, powered by TiVo, on Docomo Pacific, better together. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. The woman who helped write the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People says all eyes are on Guam's quest for decolonization as Chris Barnett has in this next report. Hawaiian attorney Mililani Trask, arguably the most well-known indigenous activist to take part in last week's Fanhita Decolonization Conference, tells KUAM News more bridges to be built between Pacific Island movements. Trask saying common problems tie our islands together. We have so many critical issues that overlap here. Militarization, toxicity of the land base, health, loss of indigenous language. So we have a great deal of experiences that we can share to strengthen each other. Soon, that's when Adeloupe spokeswoman Crystal Paco says the governor will announce Guam's way forward after the Ninth Circuit Court ruled that an indigenous plebiscite violated Dave Davis's constitutional rights. Guam is moving forward with a political status education campaign, but cannot register voters for a Chamorro-only vote on which political status option is favored by the indigenous people of Guam. While Guam has not always seen support for its struggles from Pacific Island populations outside of Micronesia, Trask says she has been trying to bring Pacific peoples together for 40 years. She adds that our island will start to see more support from the region. Right now, there is a great opportunity to really expand that, and that is because the entire Pacific casts their attention to Guam. Guam is moving forward for their indigenous peoples. They have already gone to the Federal District Court and the Ninth Circuit. One more step 
review by the U.S. Supreme Court will open the door for Guam to enter into the international human rights courts. So all in the Pacific, government and indigenous, uh, are now observing Guam, and for indigenous, we will come to support. Trask, an attorney, activist, and political speaker, also co-wrote the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. She says she came to share how not all Native Hawaiians are satisfied with their political status, adding that their insight can help guide Guam in its own quest for decolonization. We can see what the legacy of statehood has been. It has not fulfilled the promise. We are able to best share with others in the Pacific what statehood and what incorporation means for them and their children. Trask saying she was very impressed with old guard decolonization leaders like Dr. Robert Underwood and Hope Cristobal, and she said she sees similarities in how activism is shared through generations from Manomku to Manhoban. It is the natural indigenous way. The kupuna, those who are the oldest, have the longest life experience that is passed like a torch to the makua, to those who are now adults. For what purpose? For enlightening and strengthening our youth who are only the leaders of the future. But when we learn and see the strategies that other indigenous in the Pacific are utilizing, we then are best able to defend our lands and our peoples and advance and espouse our causes. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. And now here's our friends up north at KSPN2 News with regional headlines. Hoffa Day Guam, here are the headlines for CNMI. The Department of Finance distributed the first batch of tax refunds this morning, and a lot of people were relieved after looking through their mail. Money, money now! Thank you so much, because today is a Chinese holiday. Oh, oh yes, okay. yeah, it's a gift. Oh, thanks for the government. Uh, because I need this money. Although there were some citizens not too happy after opening their mail. I'm very happy that they give us back our retirement because right now we're kind of poor. In fact, I was pissed off because they, they shouldn't touch our tax. This is ours. It not belongs to them. They, we did never give them consent to touch it. Especially our retirement. They, they tax us on our retirement. Our own money. They tax you. They took maybe like 20% out of our, our retirement. What are they doing, man? Some people are still waiting for their tax refunds to come out, but are waiting patiently. I didn't. I need to check refund tax. Why mine didn't come out? Because my mom got hers and we filed at the same time, so I don't know what's wrong with it. If it comes out, then when and if, you know, I guess we just have to wait for it. But if there's a mistake on it, then I got to see what's wrong and get it fixed. So. Taxpayers who filed on or before April 15 of 2009 were sure to receive their tax refund. But if there were some issues from prior tax filings or errors, the government urges you to fix those issues now. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Sally Lemis. For more news, visit SaiapanTV.com. For KSPN 2 News, I'm Ashley McDowell. All right, thanks so much, Ashley. Back on Guam, the number of sexual assault cases last year had ranked the island third in the nation. A roundtable discussion on the community response to sexual assault locally and opportunities to improve services available for victims was recently held. The Guam Coalition Against Sexual Assault and Family Violence hosted the event, inviting key partners to address the types of sexual assault services available to victims. Coalition Executive Director Cynthia Cabot tells KUM News that funding these services is another big part of the talks. So we just wanted to be more specific on what SA services are, sexual assault services are. We wanted to uh, review the grant limitations and guidance so that we'll be able to come up with a more enriched array of services for, for our community. She continued to say that many of the cases reported among victims of sexual assault are primarily children. She adds this is mostly due to the law requiring school officials and medical professionals alike to report suspected cases of child abuse. She's concerned there may be large numbers of cases involving those 18 years of age or older that go unreported. Because there is no law to mm. mandate 18 and over to report, what we are aiming at is raising awareness and encouraging those who are victims of sexual assault to, if not to report, to at least seek services. 
If you need to contact the coalition, you can do so by calling 479-2277. That's 479-2277. And also tonight, for you hungry northerners, from classic clubs to meatball marinara's, Subway has been serving sandwiches on Guam for the past three decades. The company held a ribbon-cutting ceremony today for its newest location at the mobile Jigo North Station. Here's Managing Director Marcus Funk. On September 13, 1989, we opened the first Subway restaurant just down the street from here at a strip mall down the, down the, set, uh, down the road. And uh, 30 years later, here we are, full circle, back and reopening a brand new restaurant here in the village of uh, Jigo. This will be the 15th location that we have on Guam. So uh, the people of Guam have been really good to us, and we've been really, really fortunate. And certainly, that we're going to looking, we're looking to uh, more opportunities to grow as well. The store features new decor used so far by only a limited number of other subway locations worldwide. Today's event was merely a preview as the location will be open for business in about a week. Can't wait for that for those of us who call Jigo home. Please stay tuned. Sports is coming up next. Okay. Can you connect me to Alan, please? Attention passengers of flight AJ3004, your flight has been delayed. Woo! It's the flavor that makes you go, woo. McDonald's new spicy barbecue glazed tenders and chicken sandwich made with tender, juicy, all-white meat chicken. Available in four, six, or ten-piece chicken tenders. Try the spicy barbecue crispy chicken sandwich, too. Agent Alpha. What's that? An Alpha Insurance customer needs a claim settled immediately? I'm on it. Agent Alpha. In the event of an accident, theft, or breakdown, each of our Alpha Insure agents are trained to go above and beyond. This is my stop. There she is, targeted player. Agent Alpha. Yes! Get ready, Guam! For the Jamaican Reggae Explosion. Storehouse Productions, along with Game Time Inc., present Hope Slam 2019, a benefit concert to promote suicide awareness and prevention at the Governor Joseph Flores Memorial Park on September 21st, 2019. Live from Jamaica, we got Kevin Downswell, Jermaine Edwards, Gotti Gotti, Adrian Cunningham, and Terry Ann Johnson. We'll have local performers to get the vibe started, and food vendors will be on site. This is a family friendly event. Advanced tickets are $15 for adults and $5 for kids. Tickets available at KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. All right, welcome to Sports. Andy still filling in for Double D. And tonight we're going to be talking to Tom and Jeff about Trench Challenge. It's coming up soon at the end of this month. Uh, before we get to the whens and the wheres and all that, fellas, uh, big news, you got Coach Payne returning this year. Coach Payne is coming back this year. Uh, so you guys signed a kind of a deal with him. You have a good relationship with him, and he's really the hype man at the starting line. Pretty much. He's our um, starting line announcer, and he's also a motivational speaker yep. and a fitness coach. So it kind of all comes together. He's a very fit man, and he's very motivational. Yeah. Um, so uh, Trench Challenge is coming up on the 29th. Uh, if people still want to register, you guys have had a bunch of early bird specials, but is it still open? It is still open. Um, we're actually... Um, going to be doing a in-person registration for the first time okay and it's going to open up this wednesday and it'll be at paradise fitness all three locations and hornet sporting goods in timuning so if you've been putting it off and you think you're ready for trench challenge uh maybe get a team together you can still register yes 
All right, so you guys, not only do you put this event together, you actually take part in obstacle course races as well. Jeff, you guys just went and did the one in the, the Philippines, was it? That's right. Let's talk to us about mm -hmm. that experience. Oh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a great experience. Um, we had, um, yeah, it was, it was a tough course. It was, yeah. uh, it was long, and, uh, and uh, they, had a, they had a really, really cool setup where you're, you could actually see everything from almost one spot. You can see all the obstacles. Oh, nice. So you kind of get a good heads up of what, what's coming, and... I guess that's kind of good, kind of bad, I guess, yeah. if you're not ready. But, yeah, uh, when you see the next obstacle, yeah. you're like, oh, no, i got to get yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do yeah. you take that into consideration when you're designing these courses? Are you like, is that going to be too brutal? Because I went through that, and that was hard. Oh, definitely. We, uh, we learned a lot this, uh, at, that, at that race. On, uh, a lot of it has to do with, uh, yes, of course, the course setup and then putting proper distance between each, each, of, the, obstacle. each of the obstacles so that there's a little bit of recovery time and also so that it, it can also invite... Uh, all, all, all kinds of, all kinds Parts of athletes. Right. You get guys who are, who are Elite, strong right. runners. Yeah. Uh, they can make up a lot of the, the time uh, on the run right. if they're having a little bit of issues with the, with some of the obstacles. So something might be tough on someone who, who doesn't have a very strong core or a good grip, and uh, but they can make up, uh, make up it, uh, make up that time during a run. And so we thought a lot about that, and we learned a lot about that. Tom and I did, and so uh, that really is going to help us. Uh, uh, shape up uh, a really really cool course that that will be fun and exciting and also competitive for everyone so and challenging all. it's in uh, the name trench challenge no, it's, it's not supposed again. to be easy uh, and one thing that the reason that you guys make it so difficult is that this is an actual qualifier for the world championships talk Correct. about that uh, so trench challenge is the only um, qualifier for the obstacle course racing world championships in the western pacific nice um, so that championship is happening in London this year uh, again at the, shoot, I'd like to say October 11th to the 13th. Okay, so pretty quick turnaround for yep. whoever qualifies in Trench Challenge mm. to go off to London. Correct. <clears throat> Fantastic, man. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be challenging. You still have time to sign up, so go to TrenchEvents.com. Uh, find them on social media as well, and get ready to challenge yourself. <laughs> With double I double AG football, it was the battle of the undefeated, the FB Friars versus the Simon Sanchez High School Sharks. It was all FB handing down a beating against the Sharks with a final score of 34-6 and improving their unblemished record to 4-0. Congratulations to Guam's Grace Takuyan Witt, who placed first in the open division of the Olympia Pro Powerlifting event in Las Vegas, Nevada. Her deadlift weight of 485 pounds is a world record for her age and weight class. Grace almost hit 501 pounds, but unfortunately, it didn't count. Brazilian jiu-jitsu athletes from various local BJJ academies racked up some serious hardware in Tokyo, Japan. They just wrapped up three days of competitions in the 2019 Asian Jiu-Jitsu IBJJF Championship. Competing were local BJJ practitioners from Purebred, Carlson Gracie, Vita BJJ, and Figo Bonsai Jiu-Jitsu. Combined, Guam took home 12 gold medals, 8 silver medals, and 9 bronze medals. You can view the medal breakdowns on KUAM social media. Contract negotiations are currently underway with Vincent Askew to be the new Triton men's basketball head coach following the resignation of former coach Brent Tipton. Askew played 10 years in the NBA playing for the Philadelphia 76ers, Golden State Warriors, Sacramento Kings, the Seattle Supersonics, the New Jersey Nets, Indiana Pacers, the Denver Nuggets, and the Portland Trailblazers. Hey! Yeah! 32 teams towed the line to save lives competing this past weekend in the 14th annual United Plane Pool event in Tizen. More than $20,000 was raised to benefit the American Cancer Society and Guam Cancer Care. Taking first place in the men's division was Leo Palace Resort and Team Chikara. First place in the co-ed division was the Giving Tree Preschool Team. And taking home the Team Spirit Award was Leo Palace Resort and Team Chikara. All right, that's it for sports, but there is more primetime coming up. Thanks for watching.